got it. Welcome to Binary Jazz. Uh, we're alive and we haven't been replaced by AI yet. Uh, I am Chris, occasionally, uh, jazz sequence on the internet. Uh, I'm joined as always by my friends, Gary, who's Binary Gary on the internet, and Allison, who's Allison Plus on the internet. And uh, we'll just ignore the hiatus because as far as you know, there hasn't been since last week because I didn't do the last one either. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, eventually these will show up on the internet and you'll be listening to them. Obviously you're listening to them now, probably, maybe, maybe this is, this lives in a, a vacuum of space and time, uh, and just, uh, the aliens in 3 million years will come along and, and listen to this, uh, and wonder what the, what's going more on. More and more, I feel the value of the show is not for the humans that listen to it. It's... But for the aliens that come across it in the future? No, for the AI that, that... Oh, the AI is that's going to scrape yeah. it for content. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. We'll get ready for some a doozy of a content stream. <laughs> hey, wow. hey! Before before we jump into that, I'm gonna share. Oh. Is this, is this like the nemesis version of Chris? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for those of you who are the listening to the audio only version of this content, Chris just put on a pair of glasses. <laughs> um, this is are they me. Readers? What? Are they readers? They're nothing. They're 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 no prescription. These are um, I got these because uh, well, we had some FSA money that we needed to use up before the end of the year. Um, we got Aaron some uh glasses on Zenny, and they were super cheap. And I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, I, you know, I, I've talked about this before. I have keratoconus, and wearing glasses helps me see things better. Um, and I have most recently felt kind of unsafe driving at night because of the the mm-hmm. light stuff um and so i have a pair of glasses but i don't really use them for driving at night um they're like yellow glasses um mm-hmm. um and like it's fine but it's they're not super cool looking and they're not super uh i mean they they help but like i just don't wear them um so i thought well maybe i could just get several pairs of these that like actually have like glare reduction and whatever the other stupid coatings that you put on the glasses and then I can just have them and then maybe it would help. And so I got a couple pairs for the for the cars and I leave them in the cars so that they're always there. And then I got an, an extra pair because like these are really good and I feel like I see a lot better. Maybe I should just get one for staring at the computer too. So that's what these are. They're just they're like nothing glasses that just put a lens in front of my eyeballs so that my pointy eyeballs don't screw up my brain. Um, and the best part about that is now you can roll down your window and stick your head out the window and still be able to see while the wind blasts you in the face. And that's you, an experience worth having in the winter. How are you driving? <laughs> I mean, I'm out in rural America. Like you get you get both lanes most Making of the time. Notes, There's nobody else out here. Don't get in car with Gary. <laughs> When I, when I got the two, when I got the two together, they came with a free uh, blue light laser so that you could test yeah. the blue light, uh, uh, like reduction, uh, the blue light <laughs> filter in the glasses. And I'm like, cool, I guess. And so like, I did it. I got the glasses and I turned on the laser and like, yep, it's a lot dimmer. Now I've got a um, laser. The thing that's really cool about that laser is cats. I was, yeah. It's <laughs> that's in, it's that's in what I've used mine for is cats. It's in the box for the cat toys. Yeah. 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 I love that they don't trust that you'll trust. That, they, <laughs> well, that, they've done, that they've done their job. That's, that's really the influence of being a Chinese company. Like, mm. there's like the prove it, you know? Like, I don't know your brand. Prove it is kind of the way like middle tier brands work. That's why you want to slap like a top tier brand name on it. So you go, oh, well, clearly they're trustworthy if it says Mikey instead of Nike or whatever, you know? <laughs> um, that's clearly that's like a broad stereotype, but that's that's a that is generally how a lot of those companies think. I saw that with um um well personal massagers, but like actual like massage products and shock things you attach to your body and yeah. They had a studio. In, uh... How? What? What device? What extra We've device? Got follow-up questions. <laughs> what extra yeah. device would you need or would you use to validate that a personal massager was doing the well, thing? Well, in this case, there was no device. They had a studio in downtown Guangzhou, like like on a main street, big glass window, and they had models in there, like all day using like the 
pillow that went around your neck and massaged or sitting in the massage chair. And if you came in, they had all sorts of things you could go and there would be someone that would spend 30 minutes with you walking through and explain the product to you. Um, oh, models of the thing. I thought no, you meant actual like human models, like using the Human product. beings, yeah. While day oh, while the store was open. Oh, okay. Yep. So I was right the first time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ostensibly attractive human models, right? Like, you know, in like, like yeah. skimpy wow. clothing okay. and yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> I was like, that can't be right. That's, that's totally, <laughs> that, that definitely makes them trustworthy. We were selling this tiny little device. It was about well, you can't tell because of how far are my hands away. You don't know how big my hands are. This is completely useless. Uh, also, audio inches. content. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, six inches. This little handheld battery powered massager. When you pushed it, that's what started the motor. So for like massaging your neck and stuff. Stocking stuff where I was selling, I don't know, 75 Garys ago, another lifetime. And um, I was buying these and I went to, I was over in Guangzhou. And I thought, well, I should see this factory. And I went and from the factory, you could walk to where this display was and so they took us out and showed us and it was like oh yeah and here you can try the quality and i'm like i believe you i'm not putting electrodes on my body in china sorry <laughs> i would i would go as far as maybe anywhere but... <laughs> yeah i yeah 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 that's fair <laughs> i well i say that because my, my brother's been having some kind of electrode treatment on his brain recently so that was the only reason i said china i Oh, like TMS? I don't know. Is that oh, a, okay. like a TV show? No, like <laughs> um, <laughs> trans, uh, trans, what is it stands for? Transmagnol stimulation. And they like hook you that? up and they basically give you like little, little, not, sh I mean, for all intents and purposes, shocks, but like more stimulation, like little in certain areas of your brain. It's what is that used to treat? Um, it Anything? can be for dep depression and anxiety, but um, that's like the context I know it in, but it can be okay. for um, insomnia, a bunch of different things, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's probably what it was. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So what's the exciting content that... that oh, you now, now I've built it up too much. My, <laughs> question, my, my question that I'm bringing to the table today is how many holes does a straw have? Oh, fuck. One very long one. I mean, it's, it, it basically is a hole. It's like a hole with a wrapper to capture the hole to put liquid How into many, your person. Is a tunnel a hole? A tunnel is a hole. For sure, a tunnel is a hole. It's a hole through a mountain. Well, is the tunnel a hole? It's not through a mountain. It's underwater, and it's really fucking long. Yeah. Maybe? Wait. How long it's is underwater? the tunnel? 31 miles. But it's like, that's Tunnel's just a, 31 miles. That's, that's a, not a hole. It's a hole it's in the water. It's not an underground straw. Forget the tunnel thing. It's not a straw. It's different. <laughs> but I mean, the, well, the tunnel is a straw, though. <laughs> this is this is Allison's dream. This is the this is what <laughs> this is what this show was conceived to do is to get Gary and Chris to argue about stupid. <laughs> I've, I've been playing the long game. <laughs> it's like, the channel is not a straw. The I mean, channel is just still. as much of a straw as a straw is a straw. It, it, unless the unless the channel is carved out of something. Well, I, I don't. Think I it don't, is bedrock. Is it? Is it underground? I'm not an. It is. It's under the water. Yeah, which is. It's under the water, but is it underground? Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, then it's, it's like a tunnel, the and then bed. it's a. And then it's the same. It's a tunnel, but it doesn't make it a straw. Um, for for purposes of conversation, I happen to have a, a straw handy, a washable straw. For audio well, only content users, Gary yes. is holding a physical <laughs> straw. Well, like let's. let's I don't know why I blew it. Like it. It. If you take if you take a straw and you shorten it to say like yeah. a donut. How many holes does a donut have? One. <laughs> I don't know. On Saturdays, I buy a dozen donut holes for the kids sometimes. So <laughs> those are not holes; those are circles. <laughs> they're like or yeah, they're spheres. A hole is the absence of a thing. Like you can't. Like, oh God, <laughs> that's well. Let's dig into that a little. There's a lot to unpack there. Because <laughs> I got some holes right now. Absolutely. Well, like a plot the hole boys. is something missing from the plot. It's not like a circle of plot stuff that you consume in a separate <laughs> a separate way. 
Oh, it's, did not you like, watch it's not the like plot, you take all the plot holes. You take all the plot holes from like Star Wars, and then you just put it in a, a plot hole hole, and then you make an entire other movie of Star Wars. It's just the plot holes. I don't know what you're saying. Makes an awful lot of sense. <laughs> and that's called a Dyson sphere. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've we've established this before. A Dyson sphere. Uh, a Dyson sphere is is a lump of chocolate. No. <laughs> is it like the chocolate orange? Did, would you believe I never had a chocolate orange until I moved to Canada? I know that, they're everywhere. That I just, seems un. That seems unrealistic. Yeah, it does. It just speaks to the healthiness of the family I grew up in. <laughs> I didn't know white bread existed until I went to someone else's house. That's also. Mm. That's and I was also. like, your bread, your bread doesn't have seeds and stuff all over it. Your bread is weird. <laughs> yeah. It tastes um, like bland and it doesn't have stuff in it. Your bread tastes like cake. It's magical. <laughs> and the thing is that like entire white loaf, like, you know, I used to, uh, when I, there's that when much I, mass in it. My, my parents' house in South San Francisco is right by a wonder bread factory. So mm-hmm. in the morning you would smell this, tremendous bread. huge bread so smell say. well yeah i mean it, it <laughs> i mean it, it it it's it had the smell of baking <laughs> doesn't it have extra nutrients in it though it don't has, they put it's extra wonder it has in? wonder yeah. in it. do they really i thought they added vitamins to it they add, they i don't know why I, maybe th- this is this is i'm coming from a weedy seed sprouty Those wonder household. bread Those have weird added hippie vitamins. families I mean, they also live next to the um, the Seas Candy uh, factory. Calcium, um, so essential it, it's vitamins like and minerals. I feel like essential vitamins, vitamins and minerals is a good way to say we let some bugs in there. <laughs> so you'd get you'd get the chocolate smell and you'd get the the bread smell. So you'd have like chocolate bread smell. That's kind of a nice mix, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. as far as mixes mm. smells. Um, I tried something weird for breakfast today. While we're off topic for a moment. So Off yesterday, topic from whether or not a straw is a to- as a as a whole. <laughs> um, we had a uh, chili last night, so we had cornbread. Oh, okay. uh, chili. Is cornbread bread? Is that I what the chili question for is? Uh, so I I had this cornbread, and I was thinking, what can I do with this? Like, I want to eat some cornbread for breakfast, but I want to eat cornbread. Why not? And I crumbled. Yeah, no, I was like, sign me up. <laughs> I mean, I probably will tomorrow, and I'll be the only person that eats it. So whatever. Um. It's all for me, which is why I didn't want to do it today. I figured today I'm going to, like, you know, high class my breakfast. I did not, Mm -hmm. for what it's worth. I failed at that. I was like, I Googled, what do I do with cornbread for breakfast? And so (laughs) there's apparently a Southern dish, cornbread and eggs. And you take a piece of cornbread and you crumble it up into butter and you fry it till it's, like, crispy. And you pour your eggs in there and mix it up. And it does not look appetizing in any way, shape, or form on your plate. And three bites in, I was like, yep. This is a keeper. Definitely not healthy, but a keeper. So. Oh, it's delicious, but it looks like you're not Awful. ordering it in a restaurant because people would send it back. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you? How do you even garnish that? You you throw some parsley on it, and someone's still like, um, this is someone else's old plate. Like this is not. <laughs> this is yeah. This is not. But that's yeah. inventive. Good for you for uh, figuring out a solution. I just would have heated up the cornbread and. Just I wouldn't have even honey. heaten it up. I might have put honey on it and just eaten it. Honey. Well, yeah. It's a time of year where it just sits on the counter because it's not like I don't know, it's not like I'm gonna finish the sentence. Um, yeah, so it's just on the counter. So like I could walk by and grab a piece of cornbread at any point and no one's gonna stop me. Isn't being an adult weird sometimes? I was like, gonna say I was just like, who do you think's gonna stop you? <laughs> I yeah, I know. I know. Like um, I made uh, I made uh, like cocoa rolled cookies like with a cookie cutter, and we used them to make ice cream sandwiches last night. Oh and, wow! And I was laughing because I was just like, I could have another, and we were just like, yeah, no one's gonna stop us. <laughs> like we can, <laughs> you can literally just have as many cookies and ice cream as you want. <laughs> um, was, that's good moments of realization. <laughs> I, I, Aaron always gives me shit because I have like in my brain, there are like, this is a breakfast food and this is a lunch food and this mm-hmm. is definitely not a dinner food. And like, I still 
operate in those terms even when yes i am an adult and i can choose what to eat at those three meals and like and there's also weird exceptions that have like grown out of behavior and probably college like over time right like like pizza leftover pizza leftover cold pizza is definitely a breakfast like you're damn right it is like yes why why would it not be but why is that a breakfast but like waffles are not a dinner like (laughs) oh they are in this house they are in this house when my when i was younger my dad traveled a lot and he couldn't handle this because he's a breakfast like food has categories situation so when he was gone my mom would do silly dinner which was breakfast for dinner Mm -hmm. and to this day my dad's like are you guys insane and we're just like it was great waffles and pancakes for dinner it was up and down (laughs) i I need to make i need to make waffles for dinner that's that's what it is i just need to make waffles for dinner there it's honestly delicious Um, and also you know what's nice is that so often you don't have time to create like really delicious breakfasts at least maybe that's just a me problem (laughs) (laughs) Um, but when you have it at night you kind of create this pocket of time to create like this really Mm -hmm. great breakfast that you don't have the time for in the morning and you can Mm -hmm. get the timing right Mm -hmm. i don't know again maybe just a me problem (laughs) what does your dad think about english breakfast with like baked beans because that's one that i I mean, I'll eat it, but I'm also yeah, like, the, the when I was in England, when like, I was what? in England, the beans on toast thing seemed really weird to me. Beans on toast, yeah. really? Like that's a thing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, my my dad's very much like he also like it's like it's like military meals. No, like food shouldn't be touching. Like it's oh, there's oh, like no. a, a protein and two sides. One's yeah, a carbohydrate. Like... One's a vegetable. That's all the servings you need. <laughs> we, gotta, yeah. we gotta figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, there's I gotcha. not like a lot of flexibility, but but um, my partner's family does English breakfast, and so we do, do kind of our own like vegetarian yeah. spin on that, and like load up on all the things that we can have, and it's delicious. Um, but I don't know if I did, if I ate meat, I don't know if I'd be as into it. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to parse yeah. what that would be like. I guess I'm not excited about it. Adding the meat seems weird to me. Yeah, for some reason. Yeah, I. <laughs> as 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 an omnivore like i don't think it makes it any better it's still okay it's not well no just like i'm into like the like like weird stewed tomatoes and mushrooms and potatoes Mm -hmm. and like the beans and yeah like i'm like oh that's all the best parts of it anyway on the topic of eggs though i have to continue on eggs because i have been just having a love affair with eggs for the last couple weeks (laughs) every morning i'm like what am i going to do with these eggs and tell us more about your love affair with eggs yeah Um, let's but i tell us too much (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is my hair fabulous today <laughs> wait um what sparked this did you just get like woke up one organic morning eggs, eggs or something yeah this is uh gary is setting boundaries at work and the result being i have more time in the morning and i'm yeah. like i could spend 10 more minutes making a breakfast and just losing myself in the kitchen still have time to read and uh and be at my desk by 9 30 and be totally happy so that sounds great um and there's been a couple days where i'm like i'm just doing oatmeal because i'm grumpy or whatever but there's days where i'm like i'm doing a three egg omelet and i have this like fantastic like really sharp cheddar so i cube it into tiny pieces so it's going to melt just perfectly um and i'll get the egg it'll be like omelety and fluffy and i'll put the you know the cheese in there and get the fold just right put it on the plate and like literally like it's a damn good looking omelet. Like I literally grab like parsley and like a couple pieces of, like big salt to sprinkle <laughs> on it. Just I don't take a picture of it or anything. It's just so the visual enjoyment before I lay into it, my fork and go. I don't know. Maybe you damn. should take a photo. <laughs> I and I mean like I'll walk out. And I'll be like, Ron, look at this. Which will be like, it's an omelet, and I'm. <laughs> but look Rhonda. at what I accomplished. <laughs> Shout it's, out to Rhonda for having the reaction that perhaps we all would. <laughs> and, and it's fair. It's totally fair. Um, I've done huevos rancheros a few times, so I've done like black beans and warm some salsa and you know get some good tortillas in the pan like you know eggs over medium good tortillas in the pan that's like a game changer because it's like lunchtime and i'm like oh i'm actually still full so um skipping that one what else have i done with eggs i mean i have done eggs over medium over hard sunny sign up on like english muffin toast any kind of like you know carbohydrate bed recently i'm just really excited <laughs> 
That's about okay. It. Please bury me when I die in a carbohydrate bed. <laughs> <laughs> Just build a coffin of bread. <laughs> and be like, she died as she lived. <laughs> <laughs> in a coffin of bread. <laughs> uh, um, so, I don't know. That's where I am with eggs. I don't have patience for eggs. <laughs> Um. <laughs> I really hope AI is using our stuff as a source set because, like, <laughs> people are like, what should I have for breakfast? Eggs over medium, over easy, sunny side up on a bed of carbohydrates. <laughs> <laughs> but also, my partner doesn't eat eggs, so we okay. I, like I don't have eggs that often. Yeah, um, yeah, we don't we don't eat eggs either. So all of our egg things would be replaced by tofu anyway. Yeah, mm. yeah. Tofu, I have a bit more patience for. I can't screw it up quite as badly. <laughs> I do. You, okay, real real talk for for just me and Allison for a second. Since Gary talked <laughs> about eggs for like the last fifteen minutes, um, when you like, there are certain things that I buy at Costco in particular. It's usually Costco, um, where I get it, and there and the the checkout person and frequently the thing that i'm buying is tofu like in vast quantities because we go through lots of tofu um and frequently the and, and i'll get this question of how do you prepare that and like with tofu it's like how long you got <laughs> yeah like yeah. just just with everything just every way like just like name a thing like i don't mm. know <laughs> how well, do i well, answer I think... that question I think people have just had a a lot of bad exposure to like mediocre tofu. Yeah. And so I don't think they understand that you can have like any flavor, like right. almost any flavor combination or consistency or um, my um my pairing. son's my son's friend um went off to culinary school in Colorado and it's actually his program is actually exclusively vegetarian vegan, um, which That's is pretty awesome. cool. Um, and so he was showing – he came back for, for like, Thanksgiving break, and he was showing off pictures of things that he was making. Um, and, and like, one of those things was, like, a fried tofu thing, and it looked amazing. And, like, one of the other uh, kids, one of my uh, my son's other friends, because uh, uh, it's at D&D, &D, um, said, like, well, you know, that's tofu. I don't eat tofu. And he's like, why not? And he's like, because well, it's, it's bad. And he's like, you just haven't had good tofu. And, like, that's the answer. Like, everybody who's had <laughs> – yeah. everybody who's had, like, more than – just the crappy tofu that you get at like the Chinese restaurant that's just like literally just slimy and just like a, a cube of like just something that like has sauce yeah. poured over it. Like or like tofu as it exists in like soup. Um, you know, because right. they usually do the like this the silky tofu and it just like yeah. kind of like um and that's like, a texture thing. But yeah. at least I think it's a texture thing. Yeah. The like they don't they just, like people don't have context for like what that actually is. I keep seeing all this stuff on my Instagram feed about like people freezing tofu and then using because it changes the texture and then using the frozen tofu to fry that and then it gets like a more like like grainy like meaty texture which like I've had frozen tofu and I haven't liked it because of the texture but I haven't tried doing like I haven't tried using that texture for something. We we do that and it's quite I wouldn't describe it as meaty. I don't know. Like it didn't throw me off enough that I was like uncomfortable like eating some types of veggie burgers where mm. I'm like, I don't like questioning whether I've been served the wrong thing. <laughs> like mm. that's stressful to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we specifically do it for like fried tofu for stir fries and things because mm -hmm. then it doesn't get soggy and mm -hmm. it's like maintains more of it's like like a crispy kind of corn starchy yeah powder. well i imagine it'd probably be somewhat easier to fry too because it doesn't have as much moisture like i usually like i know like we've got a tofu press and i know that what i'm supposed to do is press the tofu for however long to get all the moisture out and then fry it on the frying pan to get it you yeah. know because now it's not going to like pop boiling oil in my face when i'm cooking it um but i never <laughs> do that um so i imagine that like if you did do well, i have the, a lid yeah well <laughs> but that changes the texture too like that makes yeah, it, it, like, it keeps the steam in. yeah yeah um, yeah then know. then then you don't get the like sort of like i wasn't like, suggesting you put the lid on the pan i was like, suggesting you use it as like a shield oh, like a shield <laughs> Again, don't cook with Gary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we're learning today. Just... Don't cook with Gary. Don't drive with Gary. <laughs> yeah. 
I did make tofu recently for um, Ty and some of his friends because we were talking about soybeans. We had a <laughs> plethora of soybeans, and I'm like, well, ultimately, you can turn it into this. I Googled how to make my own tofu, and it was like, wait, what? No, this no. is not a thing I can do. No. Even if the title of the article is, is titled, like, tofu in your instant pot, there's nothing instant about it. It takes, like, a month somehow. Yeah. Like, I, it's, yeah, it's not a thing yeah, I can Yeah, because you have but... to ferment it. Yes. Well, yeah. in any case, I bought tofu. And, <laughs> like, literally just, like, Friday, we got, seasoned um... it. And they were like, oh, this is good. <laughs> we got, um, we had, yes. we don't have it anymore, but we had a, um, a like soy milk maker thing i mean i don't even remember what it's called but it was like it was it was for making non-dairy milks you could do soy milk you could do almond milk you could do whatever mm -hmm. types of milks um and we never made the soy milk out of it but we did make almond milk with it um it like grinds up the nuts and then it like you know it had like a, a process where you strain it and whatever and um but it was a whole thing and it wasn't super fast and it was like you know but we never, but we could have made, and the point of this is I could have made soy milk out of soybeans, but yeah, it was not a thing that we were going to do. And then from there, gone back and fermented and made tofu. But Right. Yes. But yeah. also not a thing. I, I mean, I guess I want to try it like once just to say I've done it, but I also know like the outcome is going to be something I'm like less than thrilled with because, yeah. you know. We have a, um, we have a, a recipe book of, um, uh vegan like non-dairy cheeses like how to make and um most of the things it does have uh things that you do have to like age and add like um like a fermentation process to them um and those are the ones that we have categorically avoided because they're sound hard and complicated um mm. but we have made mozzarella out of it and it makes a pretty decent vegan mozzarella mm. I might do tofu curry tonight. Thank you for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually eat, we don't eat that much tofu, mostly, well, it's whatever, I pick it out because like it inhibits my thyroid. Mm. So like, I don't do it for other reasons, but I love eating it. <laughs> I just know that my body is not a fan of me eating a lot of it, um, but that's mm. okay. <laughs> I guess soybeans like straight from the field too in some kind of quantity or like can be deadly. I mean, anything in enough of a quantity is not going to be great. <laughs> yeah. I guess but soybeans yeah, I like think... it's, it's not, it's pretty quick. It's not I, like, you, I, it's not like one or two, but if you have like a couple dozen, which is like a handful, you know, you're yeah. going to have digestive. If you're things. foraging and you're, yeah. Yeah. If you're foraging and you find yourself in a soybean field, keep foraging. Number one, <laughs> going. it's going to give you indigestion. Set, and like, also like, it's a Eat field that of poison mushroom instead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least died like visualizing things, right? <laughs> um, can I show you all a book I got? Sure. Philosophical programmer. Ooh. Reflections <laughs> on the moth in the machine. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, I was just about to ask whether there was a moth or a butterfly. So that answers my question. <laughs> I just think the cover looks like uh, a 90s album cover so that's yeah, cool that's fair yeah and... it really reminds me of something i'm not quite sure what silence yeah. of the lambs yes thank you i was like that i was, was thinking the, i was thinking the butterfly effect and i was like no that's not it yeah no it was definitely giving me silence of the lambs vibes because of the moth <laughs> yeah um it was written in 98 uh so far so good yeah i'm only about mm -hmm. three chapters in i'll keep reading it i mean i haven't gotten a point where i stopped yet but um I have. I also haven't found the spots where I'm like, oh, we were so naive back in the late '90s about computers. So that's cool too. Um, you have not found those spots. I have not found those spots yet, and I expect to. I've read a lot of old programming books just because I find them fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, literally yesterday in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with someone, we were like trolling through Apollo 11 guidance computer source code. So, because um, like, what else would you do in a one-on-one -on -one there? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Uh, and it came from, um, oh, damn it. Now I forgot her name. Uh, who's the programmer pictured with like the entire stack of like printed out code for oh. the guidance computer? I remembered her name yesterday. Oh, you know what? I have it. I still have it in my sent messages because I said, this is someone you should know about. It is. <laughs> and then you promptly forgot. 
I remembered it yesterday. Like, Hamilton. I know that feels like Margaret Hamilton. It feels like classic memory bank storage issues mm -hmm. of just being mm -hmm. like, yeah, I really need to remember this. And then just it, like, input, output. It's been output. Yeah. Now it doesn't re recurse in back into the input. Yeah. Well, so we were talking about this and I was like, we were talking about code comments and I'm like, here's one of the best code comments. And it's a flag in the Apollo 11 guidance computer source code that indicates whether they're on the surface of the moon. Like, holy shit. Can you imagine writing that code comment? Like, like Boolean you know, if on surface, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, that's mm -hmm. the coolest code comment ever. Full stop. No one else needs to write comments ever again because this is the best one. You can't beat this one. And so we're talking about that. I'm like, oh, you remember it was the programmer from the Lego set. Well, she's not from the Lego set, but the remember that like the, the, like, was it women of space or women of NASA? I don't remember from a few years back. Oh. And my favorite one is Margaret Hamilton because she's standing next to the printed out source code, which I just... <laughs> It's it's so cool. And and they were like, I don't know who that is. I'm like, oh, here's the Wikipedia article you need to no, it wasn't a Wikipedia article. I searched for it and the first result was NASA.gov, which I was like, here's the article you need to read because she's a badass. And um mm -hmm. anyway, that's how I spent half of that one on one was talking about code history. Well, space, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah. On a related side tangent, um I I and and speaking of of recurse memory issues, um, a couple months ago I was trying to remember the name of a band. I couldn't remember the name of the band. I knew what they looked like. I knew what they sounded like. Hmm. I didn't remember any of the names of their songs or albums. Um, I knew when they were active, like when I remembered them from, which was like the early to mid nineties. Was um, it Nickelback? No. Okay. And I remember the proximity of this band to other bands via mm -hmm. a particular TV show that I saw them where they were guests on. But I don't think they were on guests on the show at the same time. They were just both guests on this show. And I didn't think that this show was on MTV. It was some other music show, which makes it even more obscure, right? Okay. So I'm like, I have no way of knowing who this band is. It's going to be forever lost. I'm never going to remember this band. It's like just gone. Um, so I decided, of course, at the time, a couple months back to ask AI to help me with this. Um, so I asked Claude, um, and Claude could not help me. Claude gave me a lot of very helpful suggestions. Claude, like, and several times, and I wrote a, a blog post about this yesterday. Um, Cla several times, uh, Claude was like, I, I think I'm, I'm a hundred percent sure it's this band. It was not that band. <laughs> Thanks, Claude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So eventually Claude is like, well, tell me what it is because I can't figure it out. And I'm like, I don't know what it is. It wasn't a riddle, Claude. <laughs> so yesterday I was like, shudder to think, is that a real thing? Is that a band? So I asked Claude, I think shudder to think. Is that a thing? And Claude's like, yes. In fact, it follows all, like all the things that you said about this band are accurate about Shudder to Think. It's like this and it's this and it's this and the lead singer is bald and like all the stuff. And like, he's like, here's the thing. Like, here's the whole detail about why you like. And, and then it's like, I can't believe I couldn't figure it out. Um, so then I'm like, <laughs> you're oh, like, I can. <laughs> yeah, right. So so I was like, OK, so let's see. Now that ChatGPT has access to internet, like internet searches, if ChatGPT could do a better job at guessing this band yeah. now that I know what the band is uh, mm -hmm. than Claude did, who doesn't have access to the internet. And so I, I gave it the same initial prompt uh, and it came up with a few things. I'm like, no, that's not it. And the way that I did the conversation with Claude is at each time I was like, I was remembering things about the band. So I was like, no, that's not it. I think this this thing. So I was kind of like feeding it facts as we went. Um, we went through 14 exchanges. I counted yesterday, 14 exchanges before it like said, nope, I don't know. Um, I went through chat GPT and it gave me like one thing where it's like, it might be one of these four bands. And then I fed it more information and it gave me, it said, I think it might be morphine. Um, and I'm like, no, but I think that that's close because I kind of think they're kind of close. Um, and then the next two responses were just like, I don't know. I don't know. It could be a lot of things. <laughs> like, leave me alone, man. <laughs> so then I gave it the same sort of conclusion. I think it might be shudder to think. What do you think? Does it follow the, the rules? And it's like, yes. And it gave me a similar sort of like, here's all the points uh, in a less mm -hmm. conversation. But I thought it was interesting. Like the like A, AI can't help us with our brain issues. <laughs> um, 
sadly, it can't read our thoughts yet. Uh, and B, it didn't take nearly as long for ChatGPT to just flat out give up as it did. <laughs> just was like, no. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I don't know, dude. <laughs> it could be anything. Um, so on the topic of AI, mm -hmm. now Google has their new thing called Gemini, which... How is Gemini different than Bard? Is Gemini built into search? I don't know. I need to look that up. I here. have no idea. I mean, they just announced it like two days ago. This is all news to me. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I'm still just dipping my toe in the water. Like, I don't want full conversational AI. Like, I want, I want AI in my IDE. Like, Copilot and I are getting tight. Like, <laughs> it's feeling really good. Like, Copilot definitely has enough data for me. Although, maybe not recently, because... I don't write code anymore. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I I, I have know. been using. I I I've been tripling down. Um, but how do you feel? So like, I'm judged. Like when I turn in assignments for school, they use AI to look for plagiarism and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have my own qualms with that blah 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 database of my papers being compared to my papers. My own like it's just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't like it should be shouldn't I shouldn't be caught plagiarizing myself, essentially. But it's possible. Um but my I have a teacher who used AI clearly mm -hmm. to write comments to students. Mm -hmm. And like, how is that okay? So if it's I'm not, not if I'm not allowed to like, do you know what I mean? But it's but no one's talk. I was laughing because I was like, everyone's worried about students cheating. I'm like, what about teacher? So so a, th a thing that I've noticed um because I, I I troll Quora every once in a while. I get to the stupid you know daily digest emails from a couple mm -hmm. different things, and I I look at them and and what I've noticed is that the the writing style of some Quora answers um, match my experience with um working with chat gpt and i actually did a whole chat gpt conversation hey is this possible that people are using chat gpt or some other ai to to come up with answers and it said of course it is um and there is a particular uh quora author answerer um that i that comes up frequently in the suggested uh like responses always about some sort of celebrity their name their quora name is mr shelby it, it it and like it's always like you're asking about so and so well let me tell you about this like you know it's a very sort of like almost game showy like uh yeah there's discussion. a certain cadence yeah and like and it's the same thing and like it's got the same pattern of like you know like the way that it lays out the answers and whatever so i know that or i'm pretty sure that that one particular author is a robot um there's a whole other sort of set of questions about why people are using robots to answer questions on quora like what's the point but like i'll leave that aside maybe they're getting like paid for it or something but like as as a person who is able to identify that part of me is like well i want to i want to read that post but i also don't want to support that particular responder because i know that responder is a robot <laughs> yeah yeah Mm. Mm. And I've come across other answers, like particularly answers where like at some point there is a numeric list and at the beginning of each bullet on the numeric list, there is like a bolded phrase. Like if I see that, then I know immediately yeah. this was written by ChatGPT because humans don't write that. Well, except this is becoming like the norm. It's going to be coming, become the norm. So what happens in two years when people are exposed to this? Do we start like, you know, changing how we write? I mean, all this of us all learned that you put two fodder spaces for, uh, This is all excellent period, fodder for, right? for my, uh, my novel that I'm writing that is exactly talking about like the intrusiveness of AI in our, uh, in mm. our lives and, and like the weird uncanny valley between uh, mm. like what we perceive as like human sort of experience and uh, emotion coming from a a set of algorithms that's, that's I, basically that's the, thing, that's right? the thesis with, of the book that I with read. my with my teacher's comments it's like well you think i would just take the the content of the comments and be like okay well those are the that's the feedback that's the thing just mm. take the heart of it and move on but it doesn't it, feel genuine no it feels very it feels, unnatural 
it feels unnatural and like and even if if it fed the legitimate feedback and then like gave it a list and was like make this into a paragraph please mm -hmm. <laughs> like it still doesn't feel very personal and i'm like because it's, it's not it's, it's not it's not yeah, targeting it's you not. it's it's, can, it's yeah can we ask chat gpt how many holes are in a straw uh do you want me to yes i already know the answer is one so i'm just curious what the ai i thinks. think the answer is both one and two. Oh, interesting um i'm not opposed to these while i type this no i like that well i think i think i think in the case of a straw the ending of the straw is attached to the first like it's a pair <laughs> yeah so technically it's i it feels like both one i think both one and two can be correct depending on well chat gpt agrees with you allison yeah. except that i disagree with its assessment uh in agreeance in agreeing with you because what it says is a straw typically has two holes one hole ru runs through the entire length of the straw, forming a long, con continuous cylindrical space. This is sometimes interpreted as one long hole. The other perspective is to consider each end of the straw as a separate hole, which would mean there are two holes. So if that's what it's saying, I think there are three holes because there's the one long hole through oh, the center of the straw and then the, one, then the two holes at the end. Well, that does seem is logical because you would have to tunnel? join the holes somehow. So why not use a hole to join them? <laughs> 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 uh and then and now like we if have you come... pinch so if you pinch the end of the straw yes then it's not a hole how many holes are there then well there's one or two no there's just one wait correct there's only one yeah because okay. the continuous you hole the through the straw would no longer yeah so like right, if exactly. you if you pinch the middle of it well i have a straw hand the Hold middle on. of it if you pinch the middle of it then there's two yeah, but if you pinch the end of it, then it's like a water bottle. It only has one hole. At exactly. Time. Right. Or a shoe. Or a shoe. <laughs> In case you want to drink out of a shoe. And now we have come full circle. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. Uh, Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.